Hello again. So I'm continuing my lessons on understanding polynomial graphs. And uh, we did linear, uh, constant example, and we did some quadratic. Now we're going to do a cubic. Actually, just a very basic understanding of a cubic. And all of these are positive graphs, and there's a reason why you can look at that. You look at the leading coefficient, that's the number in front of the variable with the highest exponent or degree. And that's a 1, that's a 1, that's a 1. These are all pretty true graphs. I don't have my graphing calculator out here, so I just you know, did it in my head really quickly, but they're not very difficult to graph anyways. And um, I know they're all, uh, they're all uh, positive graphs because the, well, the leading coefficient is positive or because the right side of the graph goes up. If the right side of the graph goes down, then it's a negative graph. But all of these are odd graphs. Uh, you can look at the leading degree, 3, 3 is an odd number, or if one arrow points one way and one arrow goes the other way, it basically just means it's an odd function, or odd, odd polynomial in these cases, anyways. So I want to graph these. Now, uh, what's very interesting, and I'll go ahead and say this at the end, is that, well, I can say it now. This has three zeros, and it has three roots. Uh, they're at negative 1, 0, and 1. Uh, that's also x-intercepts. Uh, there can be imaginary roots or there can be real roots. This one has one zero, but it's a repeating, uh, well, it has one, yeah, one zero, that's basically the way to say it. And it's a repeating zero or a repeating root. It happens all at the same time. And then this one has one real zero and two imaginary roots, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to go ahead and do the first one first. I've got x cubed minus x. I'm just going to prove right now that uh, this is in fact the case. What you would want to do if you were doing this type of a problem is factor. So x cubed minus x factors into x, x squared minus 1. If you remember how to do the difference of two perfect squares, it's x, uh, x squared minus 1 is x plus 1, x minus 1. Set your p of x equal to 0. That means uh, x equals 0, x plus 1 equals 0, which means that x has to be negative 1. Bam! x is 0. Bam! And x minus 1 equals 0, which means you have to figure out your x. x is 1. Woo. Three, uh, three real zeros, or three zeros, three real roots. Uh, this one also has three uh, roots, it's, but it's a repeating root. And people say, oh, that's not true. Oh, yeah, it is. I'll show you right now. Uh, p of x equals x cubed. If you want to factor it, you can actually factor it as x minus 0 times x minus 0 times x minus 0, and then prove that way it's 0, but that takes too long. x cubed is the same thing as x times x times x. Uh, set that equal to 0, well, x is 0, or x is 0, or x is 0. What's really interesting is, if you see a graph like this, you know the root repeats on, on this axis, and I'll show you how. If, if you're going on a graph, and it doesn't go up, well, it does go up, but it kind of like stalls. If it doesn't go up immediately, like kind of like how this one did, then you know there's something going on there at the x uh, axis. And what happens is it's, it's a root, it's a zero. So it, it's, it's going to go down, which makes it two, but then it goes up, which makes it three. Uh, that's kind of confusing. Let me explain that. So here we go. Oh, you're my zero. No, now you're going, oh, and then you're going back up. So that meant that it hit the x-axis, uh, it, repeat, it was a root once, so since it was going to go down twice, it, nope, that, and then when it goes back up, it go, it's uh, another root. Otherwise, the direction would go the same. Uh, it, if it just goes up as like this, without any like, you know, inflection or anything, it's a root, but now it's going down, oh, that's a second root, but no, it comes back up. So that's why it's a uh, repeating root three times. Maybe a little confusing for you, hopefully not too much, but... You know, it was something for me to buy into when I was first doing this. The last one is p of x equals x cubed minus 1. Uh, we had uh, done problems where we did the uh, difference of, factoring the difference of two perfect cubes. And in this case, there is uh, one uh, real root. It's at 1. And then there's two imaginary roots. Uh, you have to buy that. You, you do. It, it's, it can be far-fetched for a lot of students immediately, but you can Okay, if you factor x cubed minus 1, and I'm not going to go the whole way with this, it turns out to be x minus 1, x squared, change the sign, plus 1x, and then plus 1. So one of your real roots, if you set it equal to 0, is at 1. And then if you want to figure out what the two imaginary roots are, because there's, this can't factor, you'd use the quadratic formula, and you have a negative inside the square root, and then, of course, you have to account for plus or minus. 
And that, those would give you the other two imaginary roots. I don't know what they are off the top of my head. I'd have to do it. But I'd like to keep this lesson brief, well, under 15 minutes to say the least. Uh, what's really interesting about odd polynomials uh, when you're finding zeros or roots, and that's what we're actually going to go into, is that an odd polynomial can have as many as you know, uh, three roots, like this one or like this one. But if it doesn't have three roots, it can't have, uh, I'm sorry, three real roots or three zeros. It doesn't have uh, two zeros. It can only have one zero. It goes from three to one. And it can't have zero because it has to cross the x-axis because if one arrow goes one way and one arrow goes the other way, I guarantee it's going to hit the x-axis at some point. Uh, for instance, like if you have x to the seventh, it can have as many as seven real zeros. But if it doesn't have seven real zeros, or, uh, you know, it, or if the root doesn't repeat seven times, it can have five, or three, or one. But it can't have six, four, two. It's very interesting. Uh, even functions work the same way, but there's a stipulation where if it hit f of x hits x. So I don't like showing that because that just makes it more confusing. But with odd functions, uh, I'm sorry, odd polynomials, uh, you can have as many uh, roots or real zeros as there are in terms of the degree. But if you don't have that many, it goes down by a multiple of two. So it could be for, so for this one, it could be three or one. On a fifth degree, it could be five, three or one. On a seventh degree, it could be seven, five, three or one. Anyways, I'm going too far on this. I'll expound on it later. But I hope that was helpful. Actually, I, I find it pretty cool. And like I remember when I was doing this one in school, when I first did it, my teacher was trying to get me to buy it, and I didn't. And then she said, well, why don't you learn to factor it properly? And I did. And I'm like, oh, yeah, OK, that makes sense now. But that was many years ago. So anyways, uh, with that said, have a good day for now. Goodbye.